Hi students, hope you all are doing fine. Uh, today we will be doing MCQs on uh, electric charge and field chapter. Not all the, uh, not the whole chapter because we have completed certain topics till now. So based on whatever topics we have covered, we will do MCQs. First we will do based on NEET level, then we will do based on JE level. Now I think uh, the material, the transcend material has been uh, given as PDF. So you can all see the questions and if it is difficult for you to see the questions because some of you may be using mobile phone while seeing this video then don't worry I will be describing the questions right so you will be uh, able to understand the solution even if you don't see the uh, even if you don't have the option to see the questions. So let us start with the first question of the neat level. So in the first question they are saying a glass rod they have taken a glass rod and it is rubbed with uh, in the question it is given as fur okay fur but right now we will do it it's rubbed with silk okay in order to match with the option given in the book it has to be silk so you can replace the fur word with silk okay so fur is given in the EPL okay so that fur you can replace by silk okay I will also tell you what happens if glass rod is rubbed with fur. Okay, so first let us understand what happens when glass rod is rubbed with silk. Okay, so then after rubbing glass uh, silk on this glass, they are touching this glass rod on a on the disc of an electroscope. And I hope you remember the electroscope, right? So it has this uh, conductor which is actually round in shape. It's not visible, right? Okay. So it is a conductor which is round in shape. This is also conductor, and here two gold leaves are attached. Okay. So when you rub this rod with silk, it will get charged, and that charge will be transferred to the conductor through conduction. And you know that the charge will spread on the outer surface of the conductor. So these two leaves will get like charges, and therefore the two leaves will repel. So the leaves will diverge. Okay. Now the question is, X-rays are falling on the disc of this electroscope. This is your electroscope. Okay. So when the disc, when X-rays will fall on this sphere, which they are calling as disc in the electro of the electroscope, they are asking what happens to this divergence. Will it diverge more? Will it diverge less? Or will the leaves will melt? Something like that in the options they have given. So before you decide, first you have to learn when glass rod is rubbed with silk, what kind of charge this rod will acquire, positive charge or negative charge. So for that you have to see triboelectric series. So there in that series, different materials are put in column. And as you go down, the electron affinity increases. Okay. So if you see glass rod and silk in the triboelectric series, you will find that silk is below glass rod, meaning silk will have more electron affinity, meaning silk will get more electrons from the glass rod. So silk will get negatively charged, so glass rod which has lost electrons will become positively charged. So therefore, when this positively charged rod is touched to this, the whole thing will become positive and therefore the leaves will diverge. Now when x-rays fall on this metal, when X-rays will fall on the metal, a, proce a process called photoelectric effect will happen, which we will be studying in physics much later. But in chemistry, you have some idea, right? When high frequency radiation falls on metals, it will remove electrons from the metal. If it removes electrons from the metal, which this effect is called photoelectric effect, then this whole material will become more positive because it will lose more electron. So it will become more positive. And if it becomes more positive, what will happen? The divergence will increase. So if this was the divergence, now this will be the divergence. So the divergence will increase. So whichever option says divergence will increase, you can take that one. So in order to solve this problem, it was important to know which material will become positively charged. Now, for that, you have to know the triboelectric series. Now you will say, sir, so many materials are there. How will we remember all? So again, all you don't have to remember. Uh, some common materials you should know. Similar, for example, they may ask you glass which is rubbed with fur. 
So if glass is rubbed with fur, you will find that glass will become negatively charged. And this whole problem will become different now. Because if, if it was rubbed with fur, glass will become negative. This glass rod will become negative and therefore initially the leaves will be negatively charged. Both the leaves will be negatively charged. So they will repel. Understanding or not? If it was rubbed with fur, then if X-rays will fall, it will remove electrons. So it will become positive. But already it is negative. So if there is minus 10 coulomb and you add plus 5 coulomb, it will become minus 5 coulomb, right? So the negative charge, right? If already you have negative charge and then you remove electrons, which means it should become little bit positive, but already it is negative. So now its negative charge will decrease. Therefore, if the negative charge will decrease, it means the divergence will decrease because it will become less negative than before. So now the divergence will decrease. Okay, so depending on whether the glass is rubbed with silk or glass is rubbed with fur, depending on that, the answer will change. So I have done both. So you try to see both the uh, both the questions carefully. Try also with rubber or let's say plastic plastic rod rubbed with fur. Okay, so this also you try. Again, you have to know some few common materials. All materials, of course, it is not possible for you to remember. But some common materials you should know. Okay. Now, before we do question number two of the material, I just remembered that yesterday when I was doing that pentagon problem. Okay. When I was doing that pentagon problem. So, I gave you a pentagon like this. Right. I gave you a pentagon like this. And here is somewhere the centroid or the center. Okay. And then the side was A and I took this also A. This also A I took, which is wrong students. Okay. Because if this is if this is A, this is A, this is A, then this will become what? Equilateral triangle. And if it is equilateral triangle, this angle will be 60 degree. If this is 60, this is 60, this is 60, this is 60, this is 60 then the whole angle will be how much? 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus how many 60s are there? 5. So 5 into 60 will be 300 degrees. But for full, for, for full circle, for full circle, it should be 360 degree, not 300 degree. If it was hexagon, then it this triangles will be equilateral triangle. So that small mistake I have done. Actually, it is not small. Okay, It is a big mistake. So, thank you to the student who has seen carefully that this angle is actually not 60 degree. So, if this is A, this cannot be A. This cannot be A. So, what you can do is in order for that question to be correct, you can treat this as A. So, if this is A, this is also A, this is also A, this is also A, this is also A. But this cannot be A. Okay. So, what if in exam, let us say, they say, this is A and you want to know this R, then how will you do? Because see, now this angle will be how much? So this angle will be 360 degree divided by 5 because there are 5 angles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the whole 360 degree is divided by 5 equal angles, right? So it will be 5 7 is 35, 2 carry, right? 1 carry, 5 2 is 30. So 72 degree it will be. So once you know this is 72 degree, then what you can do, you can draw a perpendicular like this. Here. Then this side will be A by 2 because this is A. No, this is A. So half will be how much? A by 2. So this will be A by 2. So you will have this line, this perpendicular line and this is A by 2. And this angle will be half of this angle. This is full angle, right? 72 degrees. So this will be half. So this will be half of 72 will be 36 degree. Okay. And this side we want, no, this side, R. So from here, you can write sin 36 degree equals to opposite is A by 2. And this side is, is 90 degree, right? So this is R, right? Hypotenuse is R. So what will be your R equals to? a by 2 sine 36 degree. So you can clearly see if this is a, this cannot be a. 
so this has to be different from this side so if this is a this is a by 2 sin 36 degree so that uh, small change you have to do in that previous video okay so i hope you got the point so do not think that if it is a regular pentagon then this angle is 60 degree which i did the mistake of because the diagram which i made it looked like you know equilateral triangle and i was trying to do little fast so be careful don't do very fast fast also have presence of mind while solving problem now we will go for question number two okay question number two is talking about a very important uh, interesting question this question has come in kvpy also okay so this question is a girl brings a positively charged rod near a thin neutral stream of water from a tap so there is a tap and this is neutral stream of water neutral okay so it contains water molecules h2o molecules and those molecules are obviously neutral because as many electrons are there that many protons will be there in the atoms so this stream of water is neutral now they are saying she observed and she brought a girl brings a positively charged rod positively charged rod she observed that the stream bends towards her so the stream bends towards her like this okay question is now instead if she were to bring negatively charged rod near the stream so when she brought positively charged rod this stream of water is bent towards her towards her means towards this positive charged rod now they are asking if in this stream of neutral water neutral if she brings negatively charged rod what will happen they are asking some students know they will think like this oh positive is attracted so this water is attracted towards positive so they think the water is negative because we already know negative and positive attract so when they say the water is attracted to positive they think water is negative and if this water is negative then this negative will be repelled by negative so they will think water will go this way it will be deflected away from her but students they have mentioned the water is neutral so how is neutral object attracted to positive charged object already we have studied in theory it is charging by uh, induction right so what will happen here what actually happens is this plus charge will attract all the negative charges in the molecules this side negative charges and therefore the other side will become positive and since negative is nearer to the positive attraction will be more and that's why the neutral stream of water is attracted to this positive charge so when you bring negative charged object negative charged of a rod or whatever object to this neutral stream neutral stream of water neutral okay then what will happen this negative charged rod will repel the negative charges in the molecules will repel so negative charges will be collected this side this side, this side will become positive and now so you can see positive charge is near to negative charge so attraction will be more than repulsion so the water will be again attracted and already we have studied this neutral objects are always attracted to positive charge also negative charge also through a process called induction so the answer is the stream will be um, it will bend in the same direction whatever was the previous direction it will be same direction so option a okay simple question let us see question number three now okay so question number three says three charges are placed as shown in the figure so there is a figure this is x-axis this is y-axis okay three charges are there at the origin there is charge minus q1 and here there is charge plus q2 this distance is given as B and another charge is here minus Q3 and the distance is given as A and this angle is given theta. They want components of force on minus Q1. So they want components of force on minus Q1. Okay. 
So for that, before we continue, you need to know something that you have studied in the first view. If this is x-axis and this is y-axis, okay, and if I have a vector here a bar, then that a bar will have two components, okay, ax and here ay. You can write ay here also, okay, here also, anywhere you can write, okay. So then you write, you this component vector form will be ax i cap. Okay, multiply the magnitude with the unit vector along x axis which is i cap. Then this vector will be a y j cap. Multiply a y, this is the magnitude with unit vector along y axis which is j cap. Then if you add this vector and this vector, you will get this a bar which is your triangle law, right? This vector plus this vector is this vector. See, a x is not the vector, a x is only the magnitude of the component along x axis, multiply the component with i cap, multiply the magnitude with i cap, then you will get the vector. Already we have discussed these things, okay. So they want force on this, in this form they want. This is in components, this is the x component, this is the y component. So let us see what are the uh, forces on this minus q1. So you can see students, minus q1 is surrounded by these two charges, right. So minus q1 will be attracted to plus q2. So this is force on minus q1, matab q1 by q2, right. Similarly, this minus q1 will be repelled by minus q3. So it will be along this line. So repelled. So this force will be F13. F13. Okay, this is I am calling F12. Now the first force is already along x-axis, right? So no need to take its component because it is already along x-axis. The first force, F1, 2, bar if I write, how do you write? Magnitude into unit vector. What is the magnitude of this force? It is given by Coulomb's law. 1 by 4 by epsilon naught, magnitude of the charges. Don't write the minus sign. Q1, Q2 divided by distance between them is B square and since it is along x-axis, which unit vector is along x-axis? I cap. So this is the first force on minus q1 by plus q2. Let us now find force on this third one. But this is not along x-axis, right? So it will have x component also, y component also. So first let us see the components. So you can see the the, the force F13, which is force on minus Q1 by minus Q3, is somewhere here like this, right? This is your F13. So clearly, it will have two components, one here and one here, right? Now, which is cos and which is sine, to know that you need to know angle here. So this is theta, so opposite side also will be theta, right? So if, there, if that is theta, meaning this is theta, right? So this will be your edge. This is your adjacent side for this angle, right? So this will be cos F13 cos theta and this will be F13 sin theta. See students, if this was theta, like if they have given this theta in exam, then this will be theta. If this was given, this will be theta. Then this will be cos. But now this is theta, so this will be cos component. So where is the x component of this force in this direction, which is positive x? So it will be F13 sin theta i cap right and this force is along negative y axis so it will be plus f13 cos theta since it is along negative y axis i should write minus j cap because j cap is in this direction so unit vector in this direction will be minus j cap okay so which i can write here minus right so I hope you understood why this is minus because this component is along negative y axis. Okay. So now what is F13? F13 is the magnitude of the force so that will be written from Coulomb's law. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. F13 is force between minus q1 and minus q3. So magnitude of the charges is q1, q3. Distance between them is a square. Right? Into this sine theta. I cap minus the other force is F13 cos theta. F13 is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Magnitude of the charges 
distance between them into cos theta j k. Right? So these are the two forces. This is force on q1. This is also force on q1. So total force, net force, okay, net force on which charge they wanted, this charge minus q1 will be this plus this. So if I take this plus this, I kept, I kept, I can take common, right? This plus this. So it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught if I take common. Q1, Q2 divided by B square plus Q1, Q3 divided by A square sine theta I kept, right? So I kept, I took common and I took 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught also common. The remaining is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q3 divided by a square cos theta j k. Okay. So this is the this whole thing is the answer. You can take 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught common here also. So let us see how the options are given. So if you see option A will match. But in, in A they have written the answer in terms of this k. They have not written 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, they have written in terms of k. So, they must mention in the question that this k is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Otherwise, you will get grace marks. Okay? So, you can see q1, q2 by b square plus q1, q3 by a square sin theta i k. This is the component along x and this is the component along y which is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1, q3 by a square cos theta. So, first option is matching, right? So, the first is your x component, the second is your y component, y component, okay, fine. So, quite a simple problem. The only thing you should know is how to take components of a vector which you already know from first spin, okay. See, again and again I am saying, if there is any topic of first PU which you have forgotten and you want me to revise, please mention in the comment section, I will revise it, okay. So, this took almost the whole board, right? Okay. Now, let us see question number 4. So, question number 4 says, three equal charges, equal, okay, are placed at the three corners of a square. If the force on Q1, Q2 is F12 and between Q1, Q3 is F13, what is the ratio of magnitudes? So, there are three charges in the corner of a square. So, first you draw a square. Now, there are three equal charges there too. Okay, so though they wrote Q1, Q2, so let us write Q1 here, Q2 here, Q3 here, right somewhere, right? So, they have not mentioned this, okay? So, usually if they don't mention the where the charges are kept, then you your option may not match with your answer okay so diagram should have been there anyways so what is f12 force if the force between q1 and q2 is f12 so between these two the force is f12 so let us write what is f12 from coulomb's law side they have not given so yourself you have to assume a let us say so be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by this a square this is the force between q1 q2 then then they say force between q1 and q3 so this is q1 and q3 so this distance will be from pythagoras theorem root 2a right so this is a this is a this will be root 2a so force between 1 and 3 q1 and q3 what will be the magnitude 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q3 divided by this square this distance so if you square this you get 2a square right then then they want the ratio of f12 by f13 so this and this will cancel and in the question they also told three equal charges in the beginning so though the symbols they have used different but the values are equal so when you divide this and this will also cancel this and this will also cancel right so f12 will have 1 and f13 will have 1 by 2 so that two will go up. Everything else will cancel. Okay. So which is the right option? Option B. 
Okay. <coughs> but suppose if I put Q3 here and Q2 there, okay, then the answer will change. Right? Okay. So I'm doing the video at night, so you know dogs are barking. So you may have to you know listen to that also. Please don't mind about that. See question number five now. Force of attraction between two point charges Q and minus Q separated by d meter is Fe. Force of attraction between two point charges. So this is Q, this is minus Q point charges and the attractive force they are saying is F. So formula you can write if you want 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q, Q by R squared, magnitude, okay, so don't write the sign, and R is this distance. Now they are saying, um, when these charges are placed, the same charges are placed on two identical spheres, on two spheres, okay, and the radius of the spheres is 0 0.3 D, whose centers are D meter apart, so this sphere and okay, Initial, uh, initially the point charges they told, if you read the first part of the question, the distance between them is d only. Now they are keeping this charge on this sphere. So what will happen? The, the charge will spread on this sphere, right? Similarly, this charge will spread on this sphere. And the center to center distance is also given d. Okay. So now they are asking the force of attraction between them, whatever this is also positive, see this is positive, this is negative, here also they will attract. Question is the force of attraction will be greater than this Fe, this is given in the question Fe. So will it be greater than Fe, less than Fe, equal to Fe or option C and D are same, so that is not possible. So they should have given fourth option as you know. Uh, uh, the information is not enough to decide like that okay now they told the radius is 0 0.3 d so this is 0 0.3 d this is 0 0.3 d that means the radius this d is r by 0 0.3 that means it is 10 by 3 that means this whole thing will come much 3.3 r approximately that means this distance is not very large Basically, this part is saying this distance is not very large and already I have told you if the distance is not very large then these charges on this sphere and these charges on this sphere will interact and if they interact what will happen see most some of you may be thinking this whole charge if I concentrate at the center and whole charge if I concentrate at the center then the force between these two spheres will be exactly same as this only 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by from center to center but since the distance between them is not very large there will be induction between them so this plus will attract so the minus will see if the minus was uniformly distributed and the plus was also uniformly distributed okay if the minus was uniformly distributed and plus was also uniformly distributed like this then you can assume the center of charge of this will be here itself and the center of this charge also will be here then the formula for attraction between these two spheres will match with this but since the distance is very close this will interact with this that means this is plus this is minus so what will happen attraction will happen right so the minus charges will be concentrated more here than here and the plus charges will be concentrated more here than here which means the center of the charge just like center of the mass right it will be shifted towards wherever more mass is there so center of this distribution of charge positive charge will be somewhere here and the center of the negative charge because more negative charge is this side so the center of this negative charge will be somewhere here so now if you see the distance between the centers of the charges is not d but it is let us say d dash which is less than d okay so this distance is now less than d this 
and if distance is less what will be force more because it is inversely so the force now between these two if i say this attraction is f e dash this attraction attractive force is f e dash then f e dash will be greater than f e similar question i have already solved okay so this is like a revision actually okay uh, let us see now question number 6 two charges are at a distance d apart if a copper plate of thickness d by 2 is placed between them what will be the effective force okay uh, question number 6 students make a note okay 6 will be done in next chapter next chapter okay the reason is how electric field um, is affected by you know metals that we will study in only in the next chapter okay so i know the question by mistake is has come in this chapter but this question can be done only once you know how electric field gets affected when you put uh, metals in between charges okay so for the time being you can skip this question and don't worry i will be doing it once we finish electrostatics of conductor if you see the next chapter in epl you will find a topic called electrostatics of conductors okay so that time we will be doing question number six question number seven you see now a charge a charge small q is placed at the center of the line joining two equal charges the system of the three charges will be in equilibrium if small q is equal to this we have done yesterday okay so it is minus q by 4 option b please check the video you will find the answer minus capital q by 4 let us now do question number 8 three charges each of value plus q are placed at the corners of an equilateral triangle so question number eight so there are there is an equilateral triangle and three equal charges are kept three equal charges are kept at the vertices of the equilateral triangle a fourth charge capital q is placed at the center of the triangle center of the triangle means wherever the medians will intersect and that is called central so here they are going to keep a charge capital q for what value of capital q so you have to find capital q will the system be in equilibrium so they want system so question is what is capital q so that system is in equilibrium okay so you know that forget about capital q you know at the centroid what will be the electric field due to these three charges already in the previous videos we have seen electric field at the centroid because of symmetry electric field here is zero so if you put any charge here force on that charge will be also zero so we know that the moment you keep this charge here this charge will be always in equilibrium question is whether this will be in equilibrium equilibrium or not so let us see so this q will feel a force because of this q repulsive this side and what will be the formula for that force 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q q square divided by distance between them let us say a so a square so this is also a this is also a equilateral triangle right similarly this charge will also be repelled by this charge this way and that will be also f in magnitude it will be same because this force will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by this distance a square so same formula so if this charge this see these are the two forces on this by this and this so the resultant of this cannot be zero right resultant of this will be somewhere here so if you keep a third charge here positive charge if you keep if this is positive then that will this positive will also repel so if everybody repels then this charge cannot be in equilibrium so it is very clear that this charge whatever you are going to keep here that charge must be negative if it is negative then what will happen this small q will be attracted this side 
with a force, let us say F dash. So let us write F dash. It is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. This Q magnitude, this Q and this Q magnitude is how much? Capital Q. Don't write the minus sign divided by this distance from here to here. So that distance let us say is R. Then I write R square. Now how to find that distance from centroid to vertex? So that you have to see separately. So let me explain here and here. Okay. So suppose you have an equilateral triangle. So you know this is something called centroid where the medians will intersect. So this is the centroid. I want this distance. Okay. So you know that you see you know that this angle you know this whole angle is how much 60 degrees so this this is bisecting this now so this will be how much 30 degree yes or no and this is how much a by 2 because this whole thing is a so this half will be a by 2 so this is now if you use cos 30 degree cos 30 degree that will be adjacent adjacent is a by 2 hypotenuse is this right in this triangle this triangle you see this triangle so this is your hypotenuse so this is your r which i want to find so this is your r now cos cos 30 is how much cos 30 is root 3 by 2 right right so your r will be if you 2 2 will cancel right so this a by 2 i can write a by 2 r also so this 2 and this 2 will cancel so r will be a by root 3 okay i hope it is visible so r is this r is a by root 3 just remember that this angle is 30 degree because this whole angle is 60 degree and this line will bisect this angle because it has to meet this line has to reach the midpoint of this side okay so we know that this small r is a by root 3 so memorize this distance between uh, centroid and corner of a equilateral triangle is a by root 3 okay fine so once you know small r is a by root 3 so in place of this small r i can write a by root 3 okay so here i can write a by root 3 a by root 3 square. So what will be your f dash now? So f dash will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by a square and root 3 square will be 3 that will go up. So, so till now what I have done? I have found the force between small q and small q and this is force between small q and minus capital. So there are three forces. Right now, you want the total force to be zero, remember. That means the resultant of these two, that will be here. Yes or no? And that resultant FR will be how much? Root of this F square plus F square plus 2FF. Angle between those two forces is 60 degree because this is 60 degree. So, cos 60 degree is half. You know this formula, right? Already I have discussed. So 2, 2 will cancel. This is cos 60 degree. So this will come root 3f. So this resultant is how much now I have understood. f and f at 60 degree. Resultant will be root 3f. Now that root 3f will be bisecting this angle. Because these two forces are equal. And that root 3f is opposite to this f dash. So net force, so let me uh, write here, okay, so net force on which charge, this Q, or you can choose this Q or this Q, doesn't matter, on Q will be 0, why you want it to be 0, because they want the system to be in what, equilibrium, so if the net force on this Q should be 0, then it means the resultant of this force and this force, which is this, should balance this. That means a dash should be opposite to this resultant and it should be equal in magnitude. Right? 
So f dash magnitude should be equal to this f r magnitude. Okay. Now what is f dash? We have seen here. Sorry, f dash is here. So it is one by four by epsilon naught three q q by a square, right? And what is f r? F r is root three f. Root three f, right? Then what is f we have found here? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by a square. Right students? So let us see what will cancel. This will cancel with this. 1 q will cancel. Okay. a square will cancel. So what is left? 3 capital Q is equals to root 3 small q. So capital Q will be root 3 by 3 q. So capital Q will be small q divided by root 3. So what charge you should keep here? Minus capital Q. So minus capital Q means minus q by root 3. Minus q by root 3. So that is your answer. So if you see the options, minus q by 3 is not there in any of the option, okay. So one of the options, you just change it to minus q by 3, okay. But this is perfect, okay. There is no mistake here. So in the printing only, some mistake has happened, okay. So let us now go for question number 9. So I hope all of you understood this problem, very simple problem. Uh, it takes time only if, you know, uh, you start writing all these things. Now you should be able to do this very fast students. See, if you know F and F force is at 60 degree, resultant should be directly root 3 F. You should not waste time. Because you know root of F square plus F square plus 2 into F into F cos 60. Cos 60 is half. 2, 2 will cancel. So root of F square plus F square plus F square which is root 3 F. So that way you, know, you should try to spend less time and also try to remember the distance between uh, centroid and corner of a equilateral triangle. It is A by root 3 where A is the side of the triangle. Let us see the next question now. Question number 9. So they are saying four charges equal to minus Q are placed at the four corners of a square. So this time question number 9 that are four charges which are kept at the corners of a square minus q minus q minus q minus q okay then they are asking uh, and a charge small q is at its center charge small q here is at the center if the system is in equilibrium, again they want system to be in equilibrium. System to be in equilibrium. Then the question is, what is the value of small q? Okay, so let us try to solve what should be the small q. Options are in terms of capital Q. Now first analyze. For system to be in equilibrium, all the charges should be in equilibrium. Is this in equilibrium? Yes. Could this will be attracted by this, this side? This will be attracted by this, this side. So this will be attracted by this, this side. This will be attracted by this, this side. So net force will be zero because each force will balance the other force. And you know from previous uh, topics that electric field here is zero. So if you put due to this four source charges, so electric field here is zero. So if you keep another charge at that point, if electric field itself is zero, force on the charge will be zero. So you know this will be in equilibrium. Question is will this be in equilibrium or not? This one, this one, this one. So you try for any one of them, same answer will come because it is symmetrical, right? Each charge is equivalent. So let us find uh, forces on this and net force on this, we should try to make it zero. So force on this by this, it will be F this side. F. And what will be the formula for F? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q, Q in magnitude only, magnitude divided by this side, this side is A, let's say, it will be A square. What about force on this by this, that will be also repulsive, that will be also F, 
and force on this by this that is also repulsive force on this by this cylinder that will be also repulsive and we have already already done that this will be f by 2 remember one numerical also we did this was 18 this was 18 and this was 9 so let us not waste time okay so this will be f by 2 of course for that charges should be equal here 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 okay now all the three forces are this side so how it will be zero only if this charge is positive because you want this charge to attract this one so there will be one more force like this f dash so f dash is force on this minus q by this small q and in magnitude how much it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught small q magnitude of minus q which is capital q divided by this distance now you know the whole distance the whole distance is root 2a yes or no whole distance is root 2a so this is half of that so half of root 2a so this distance will be half of root 2a that will be a by root 2 a by root 2 so this will be a by root 2 whole square and that will be this 2 root 2 square will be 2 that will go up q q by 4 pi epsilon naught a square correct now so let us understand how many forces are acting on this charge four forces why because in the surrounding there are how many charges four charges minus q minus q minus q and small q so this minus q this minus q this minus q will repel and this plus q will attract so this alone should balance this tree now this f and this f resultant will be how much here root 2 f right root over f square plus f square plus 2 f f cos 90 cos 90 is 0 so root of f square plus f square which is root 2 f so resultant of this and this here will be root 2 f then this f by 2 is in the same direction so the net force in this direction is root 2 f plus f by 2 right plus this third force then this side is how much f dash which we have written the formula so for equilibrium what should happen this should balance this so now let us rub this we don't need this now so for equilibrium for equilibrium net force should be zero that means this force should be equal and opposite to this force opposite they are now they should be equal in magnitude so f dash should be equal to this force now here i can take f common so root 2 plus half, half into f now let us put the formulas what is f dash this one so 2 q q by 4 pi epsilon naught a square this is root 2 plus half into this f and this f is this right 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by a square so a square a square cancel 4 pi epsilon naught cancel 1 capital q cancel so they want a small q so small q will be root 2 plus half into q and this 2 will come down so let's see which option we have it has to be positive okay so correct a cannot be um, B right yes B will be right because here if you take LCM this will be 2 2 root 2 plus 1 into Q by 2 and 2 into 2 is 4 so in the denominator you will get 4 so option B is correct let us see now uh, let us see now question number 10 okay two identical small conducting spheres carry identical charges if the spheres are set at certain distance apart they repel each other with a force so two identical spheres are there small they should mention so that we can apply the formula for point charges and at a distance r and they repel each other with a force f they are seen so formula will be what q q by r square why q q because they contain same charge in the question they told identical charges now a third small conducting sphere identical to the other two so that another conductor 
they have taken third one and this is identical to this two but the radius will be same and this but initially uncharged so this has no charge is then touched to one sphere and then to the other before removing it the force between the original two spheres so now what they are doing they are taking this and touching here and then touching here and then removing it and then they are asking the new force so this concept in numericals we have done when two identical spheres are brought in contact the total charge will be shared equally if the spheres are identical so this sphere is identical to this sphere so when you bring this in contact like this what is the total charge total charge is q plus 0 q and that total charge will be divided equally that means this will have q by 2 and this will have charge q by 2 after contact then they are going to bring this and they are going to touch this one with this one later so if you touch this with this now what is the total charge total charge is q by 2 plus q that will be how much 3 q by 2 and half of this total charge will be divided equally no so half of this will be going to this and this so after contact this will have how much half of this half of this will be 3 q by 4 and half of this will be here 3 q by 4 and then after bringing this in contact with this and this this one is removed so now your system will look like this so what will be the new force they are asking so new force will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught what are the new charges q by 2 into 3 q by 4 divided by this distance was same only right so r square so you look carefully this 3 divided by 2 4 size is 8 into remaining is what 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by r square remaining right only this part is extra which i wrote here 3 by 8 so this is what this is your initial force original force so 3 8 times the original force so the force will become 3 8 3 by 8 times original force option b so this is how things change when you bring two spheres identical spheres and touch with each other okay the total charge will be shared equally okay so this is question number 10 let us see now question number 11 okay listen carefully so question number 11 says in the diagram okay let me just adjust this for the time being yeah in the diagram shown the charge plus capital q is fixed so there is a charge plus capital q which is fixed another charge plus two small q is projected from a distance r from the fixed charge so another charge is there and at a distance r here the charge is plus 2q okay and it is projected from a distance r so it is projected at some velocity minimum separation between the charges if the velocity at this moment is 1 by root 3 of velocity of projection so velocity of projection they have not mentioned let us say v or let us say u doesn't matter at 30 degree they have told okay then they are asking what will be the minimum separation between the charges if the velocity at this moment at this moment means when the distance between them is minimum so that time Mm, the velocity is 1 by root 3 of velocity of projection so this is your velocity of projection velocity of projection okay so first students uh, this is very interesting okay so the question is here is one charge here is one charge if this charge is thrown with velocity u at angle 30 degree well, how its path will look like now if this charge was not there from Newton's first law, this will continue in a straight line. If no forces act on a body, it continues in a straight line. But you know this force, this charge will repel this charge. 
So as it tries to go this way, this will repel. So the path will look something like this. Something like this. Okay. So if you see, it is coming in a way nearer, 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 and then it is going further, further, further. So somewhere, okay, somewhere it will it will have minimum separation. So right now this is the separation. Right? So it comes nearer and then it goes further. Let me remove this part. Okay. So this here the, in this arrow represents the velocity u. And this u is your velocity of projection. Okay, so this is the path of the charge. Path. So this is how this charge will go. You have a rough idea, right? Because it will be repelled this way. And it was already going this way. So because of inertia, it wants to go here. But force is this side. So it will go somewhere like that. Now, they are asking the minimum separation. Now, why will there be minimum separation? In the diagram, it is very clear. It is coming a little bit nearer and then again going farther. So this distance is, you know, when this charge will reach here, this will be the distance which is less. So when it will be minimum, it is very clear, it will be minimum when the velocity vector, wherever, it's, uh, velo wherever uh, is the velocity, that velocity vector will be perpendicular to the line joining the charges. What did I say? Got confused, I think, right? So listen here carefully. So imagine you are here. Imagine you are here. This is your eyes. And your friend is coming like this and going like this. This is your friend's path. Initially, your friend was here, so this was the separation. Now your friend is here, this is the separation. So when is the separation minimum? The separation is minimum when how do you draw velocity vector? Tangent to the path. From first view, you know, projectile motion chapter, you see now, please. So when it is here, how will you draw velocity vector? Tangent here, tangent here, tangent. And the line joining you and your friend is this. Right? Here, this is the line joining you and your friend. Here, this is the line joining. So neither here nor here, the velocity vector. This is velocity vector is perpendicular to the line joining. But here you see here, when you are at minimum separation, when your friend is at minimum separation from you, that time the velocity vector is perpendicular to the line joining both of you. Very useful concept to do difficult problems you know, in, in other chapters also, especially first few chapters. So, when a body is fixed and the other body is moving like this in a curved path, okay, the distance between them will be minimum when the velocity vector of the particle becomes perpendicular to the line joining the two particles. Okay, so let us say somewhere here the distance, the velocity vector will be tangent. No, so this is the path. So how will you do tangent like this? And that moment, the line joining doesn't look perpendicular, right? Like this, like this. So this is the path. Okay, so this is the path, this is the tangent, and this is a line joining the two charges. So when the charge reaches here, that time this distance is minimum. Minimum. And at that moment your velocity vector should be perpendicular to this line. I have proved to you. And that velocity they are saying is 1 by root 3 times the velocity of projection which I have taken u. Okay, so this is your initial velocity, this is your final velocity. So they want this minimum separation in terms of this r. Options are in terms of this r. What was r? Initial separation. They want minimum separation. Okay. This is not path. Okay, so let me run through all these extra things. Okay. Okay, this also I think you understood. Fine. So now, how are they going to solve this problem? Very simple. You know that electrostatic force between these two charges is a what kind of force? Central force. Already in this theory we have discussed. Since it is central force, torque about this plus Q will be zero. Torque will be zero because the force will pass through this point. Whether the charge is here or here or here, it doesn't matter. 
whatever wherever may be the charge the force on that charge by this charge will be repulsive so it will be along this line so the so the line of force will pass through this point and if force passes through a point then torque about that point will be zero already i have explained because torque is r perpendicular into f so and r perpendicular was if force is here then this is r perpendicular but if force is passing through that point about which you want torque then your torque will be zero so already i have discussed all these things so let me not waste so much time so torque about this plus q we know is zero and if torque is zero what we have learned angular momentum must be conserved about plus q this term and how do you calculate angular momentum simple if this is a particle whose velocity is in this direction whose mass is m then angular momentum is given by r perpendicular into p again like torque whenever you calculate angular momentum you have to calculate about a point so angular momentum about this point about or how to find extend the line of velocity not force this time extend the line of velocity then you drop the perpendicular so this is your angular momentum and momentum you know momentum is mass into velocity right in chemistry you know when when electron revolves around the nucleus this is your velocity this is your r perpendicular which is radius itself and we have written angular momentum as mpr right same as this mpr so this is angular momentum about nucleus so i think all of you understood how to find angular momentum so revise okay in first view you have done it here also i am doing revision so see whenever a particle moves it will have momentum but in order to have angular momentum about some point the particle should move with some separation the particle should not pass through this point itself then there will be again no angular momentum okay so once you know this so we have learned that angular momentum of this particle should be conserved about this charge because torque is zero about this charge so when it was here this is your velocity right so let me draw this is plus q this was r and this was your velocity u so if you extend the line of velocity and then you drop perpendicular this will be r perpendicular this is 30 degree this is r perpendicular means this is 90 so this is your hypotenuse no opposite to 90 degree so this will be r this is hypotenuse this is 30 this is opposite side of 30 so this will be r so this r perpendicular will be hypotenuse into sin 30 you know no this things right students sin 30 you calculate what will be sin 30 opposite is r perpendicular which i want hypotenuse is r so what will be r perpendicular cross multiply so r perpendicular is sin 30 is half so when the particle was here what was the angular momentum formula is what r perpendicular into mass of the particle into initial velocity which is u right i told you the formula right for angular momentum and what is r perpendicular initially when it was here that time r perpendicular is r by 2 right so this is your r perpendicular so this is angular momentum at this point if i call this point a and this point b then this is angular momentum at point a similarly angular momentum at point b will be how much when it reaches here its velocity is b and what is r perpendicular from this point which is this itself this is already 90 degree right so here r perpendicular is r minimum which we want into m into v and v is given how much in the question we are told u by root 3 okay so since we know electrostatic force electrostatic force is central force okay torque 
on this charge about this charge will always be zero and if torque is zero angular momentum should be conserved during this journey angular momentum is conserved means angular momentum at every point should be constant so here angular momentum i wrote l a here i wrote l b this is initial point and this is the point when the separation became what i told minimum and when it is here what is your r perpendicular extend the line of velocity which i did here and then about this point i want now so from there you drop a perpendicular to this velocity see so this is r perpendicular then you write this r perpendicular in terms of given quantity given quantity is this this r so this is 30 degree so this will be r sin 30 degree and what is the formula for angular momentum r perpendicular into p just like torque is r perpendicular into force that's why torque is called moment of force and angular momentum is called moment of momentum because the formulas are similar okay so this is your r capital r by p so when it was here at point A, what was the angular momentum? R perpendicular into P. And what is P? Mass into velocity. So R perpendicular is R by 2. This is R perpendicular which I have shown is R by 2. Here also, right? Mass into velocity. Velocity here I wrote U. Myself only because they told velocity here is one third of here. In the question they have told. So then I went for point B when it reaches here. That time this is your line of velocity and about this point if you drop a perpendicular this itself will be your R perpendicular when it reaches here not here and that is what we want. So R perpendicular into M into V here and V here we are told is one third of sorry one by root three of initial velocity. So then let us see U M U and M and U will cancel. So what will be R minimum cross multiply root 3 by 2 into r so again a very nice question so many concepts are there but if you are well versed in your first PU this question will be done easy but you need to be good in your first PU concepts I am taking time because I am revising first PU concepts also ok let us see now question number 12 So like this, you know, this, that's why I am saying after every few videos, we must do MCQs because once you do MCQs, then you come to know that how so many concepts of first PU that you have studied are interlinked with second PU concepts. And then when you solve the questions, you feel really nice, right? See question number now, two. Mm, Okay, a 10 gram block, 10 gram, so mass is 10 gram block has a charge 8 into 10 power minus 5 coulomb. It is placed in an electric field. An electric field is given as a vector 3 into 10 to the power 3 i cap minus 600 j cap in what units newton per coulomb if the block is released from rest at origin so imagine this is x y so particle is released from the release means initial velocity is zero at time zero then they are asking what is the x coordinate of the particle so they want x coordinate at what time three seconds okay so simple problem so when you this particle has charge remember it has mass it has charge and there is already electric field and can you tell me where is the electric field can i say the electric field is along x-axis no if it was along x-axis only i component would be there here x is also there y is also there so electric field is and y component is this way so electric field is somewhere here so it is a uniform electric field how do i know because it is given a number number it is not given as a function of time so electric field is constant 
So the moment you release this charge, it will accelerate in this direction. So after 3 seconds, it will be somewhere here maybe. So that time it will have some coordinate, x coordinate and y coordinate, they want x coordinate. Basically they want displacement. Right? See students, if you if this is your origin, if you start from here and you go to here, then what is your displacement? x2 minus x1, this is your displacement. But if you start from origin and then you go here, then this itself is your displacement. Then no need to write x2 minus x1. Then x itself will be your displacement, x minus 0, if you start from origin. So in this problem, the particle starts from origin. So what we will do, we want x now. So let us write the formula for x component of displacement we want. So that is what is the formula? ux t plus half ax t square. Right? This formula we know. Now ax we want acceleration along x axis so that to write to find acceleration use newton's law force by mass but i want acceleration along x axis so you should divide force along x axis by mass what is the force along x axis this force is due to electric field and what is force we write q into e yes or no it is a vector equation now nah? so if you write this for x component it will be fx so fx will be q into ex divided by mass. So let us calculate the acceleration. Charge is 8 into 10 power minus 5. Electric field along x axis is this 3 into 10 power. 3. This is ex. Okay, this is your ex. And this is with minus sign is e1. But we want only x component because they want only x component of displacement divided by mass. Mass is 10 gram. 10 gram. Gram means 10 power minus 3 kg. So this will be 3 is 24. This is minus 2. Right? Minus 2 will go up. Plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 minus 5 0. So 10 to the power 0 will be 1. So 24 meter per second square. So I found the acceleration. And what is the initial velocity? Well, initial velocity is 0. So, if velocity itself is 0, what will be x component? 0. u cos theta or u sin theta, right? Since u itself is 0, what is u cos theta? 0. So, initial velocity is 0. So, what will be x half acceleration along x axis is how much? 24. Constant it is remember, into time. And after what time they want? 3. So it will be 3 square. So this will be 12. So 12 into 3 square is 9. 9 twos are 18, 8 1 kg, 9 ones are 9, 10. So x coordinate will be 108 meters. So which option it is? 108 meters. Option D. I want you to find y component of displacement at as homework y component of displacement. What formula will you use? y equal to uy t plus half ay t square. But uy is also 0 because u is 0. Okay? Fine. Uh, little bit variation let me tell you in this problem. They can ask you in the same problem final velocity also. So for that you need to find vx for that you need to find vx and ux okay vx and u vy sorry so vy will be vx will be ux plus axt vy will be ui plus ayt okay now in variation okay so some extra concept you see in this problem, electric field was given as a constant, but sometimes when we say electric field is like this, it is you know 2 t square i cap plus 2 or let's say 5 t j cap. Initial velocity is 0. Okay, charge is whatever 10 power minus 6 coulomb, mass is 10 grams whatever it is doesn't matter then i want x after t equal to 3 seconds this initial velocity is 0 
at origin okay at origin so if they give electric field like this then students you cannot use the standard equations s equal to ut plus half at square that formula was derived for constant acceleration see your epl open first pu uh, epl physics there you see the which chapter second or second chapter motion in a straight line and there you study about derivation of s equal to ut plus half at square you will find that it was derived for constant acceleration and this acceleration will not be constant because electric field is changing with time so suppose i want x then you are only worried along x axis so what is the electric field along x axis according to this formula 2t square yes or no so if that is your electric field what will be force along x axis q into ex so q is some number right so forget that number q into 2 into t square so this is your force so it's not a number now it is a function of time so what will be acceleration force divided by mass so this is number but time is changing all the time right time will keep changing so now how will you find uh, x you cannot write that uxt plus half axt square formula so since your acceleration is changing with time you have to go for calculus method Matlab, this acceleration is instantaneous acceleration no it is at a given instant so i can write this as db by dt but it is x right x that will be equal to 2q by m t square then you cross multiply so if you cross multiply what will you get so if you cross multiply you will get dv x equals to 2q by m t square dt after you cross multiply you will integrate this is constant so at time 0 they said the velocity initially was 0 after time t what is the velocity we don't know let us write vx this integration will give you vx right integration of dx is x so integration of dvx will be vx upper limit lower limit you substitute and here it will be integration of t square dt will be t power 3 by 3 right x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 put upper limit and lower limit you will get t cube by 3 so you found vx but sir we wanted x now what is dx since this is instantaneous velocity you can write dx as dx by dt 2 q m t cube by 3 then again cross multiply so if you cross multiply this dt will come here then you integrate at time 0 the x coordinate was 0 because it started from origin and after what time they want after 3 seconds Right. they wanted the displacement x so from 0 to x integration of dx will be x upper limit is x lower limit is 0 and this will be 2q by m into this will be 3 you can take outside integration of t cube will be t power 4 by 4 upper limit is 3 lower limit is 0 then the final answer will be 2q by 3m into put upper limit 3 power 4 by 4 then your answer will be this q and m was given so this is just variation i am teaching by chance no, if electric field is not given as a constant but if it is if it is given as a function then you should make use of calculus method don't use s equal to ut plus half at square formula okay Fine, let us now see the next question. Question number 13 is exactly same as question number 10. Okay, so option D we have done already. Question number 14, you see. 14 actually we did it, okay, but in a different way we did. Different way we did. The 14. Two small balls each carry charge Q are suspended by insulating threads of equal length L 
from a hook in a elevator in a elevator like a uh, lift the elevator is falling freely we are saying elevator is falling freely what is the tension in each thread so basically the question is there are two pendulums like this and each ball has charge q q am i right yes mass they have not given but you can assume mass also same or different doesn't matter m1 m2 also okay now the moment you put charge they will not stay like this right they will repel each other and somewhere here they will come so let us say this is in equilibrium okay so in equilibrium this is how they will stay and since it is in equilibrium net force should be zero so there will be one force here tension t here mg right if the mass is m2 then by m2g let us say mass is same for the time being so mg and here it will be force of this on this it will be fe one problem we did in epl where electric field was there that time we wrote qe but here we have to write force between these two charges so this is r then this force will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q divided by r square okay and now how it will be in equilibrium already i have told you if this angle is theta then tan theta will be what i told you to memorize that answer tan theta will be f e divided by m g okay how the formula comes i told you that this t i can break into two components once i break t into two components you forget the t now and here this is theta means this is theta so this is t so this will be t cos theta t sin theta right so before how many forces were acting three forces t tension force from the wire mg force from the earth and electrostatic force because of the charges but now I have broken tension into two components along y-axis and x-axis. Once you break tension into two components, now how many forces are there? Four. These two components and these two forces. Don't count tension again. See, once this is Funkel Sarno, if you break him into two components, then you will not have the components also and him also. Either you will be either I will be there or my components will be there. So similarly, once you break the force into two components, forget about the tension now. You have broken tension into two components. So now along x-axis, see equilibrium means what? Net force should be zero, not only along x, but also along y. So along x, how it will be in equilibrium? T sine theta should balance F e. And along y, T cos theta should balance mg. Right? And if you divide this two, T and T will cancel, sine by cos will be tan theta and F E by M G. So this is the uh, this is how the angle, this is how you can find the angle in equilibrium. But the question was this whole thing is in a elevator. Okay, let me show you this set. So the whole thing is in a elevator. Elevator. Spelling I don't know, elevator. Okay, let me write lift. <laughs> Better now. So lift. Now they are saying that lift is falling freely. Falling freely. And you know if something falls freely, the effective gravity becomes zero. So if you are an observer inside here, then for you gravity is not there. You will not feel gravity. Okay, so one of the experiment I ask students to perform is, you know, you take some tumbler like this, take some tumbler, put water, okay. If you make holes here, then water will come out because gravity is pulling the water and there is no support now. If you make hole, water will come out, no, the gravity is pulling out. So you can see, yes, gravity is there, you will say. But now make holes and you allow it to fall, fall. So during that time it is falling, you will see the water will not come out. Do if you don't believe, check. 
but don't take this kind of cup it will break okay you take some plastic so during that time it is falling freely water in from the holes will not come out because in that frame the gravity in a way is absent okay that is because the hole and the water are falling at the same rate so if they are falling at the same rate in that frame you will not feel any acceleration due to gravity so here in this frame gravity's effective value will be zero so this g will be zero now in this frame okay so now if g is zero this will become infinity and if it is infinity what will be theta 90 degree this theta will be 90 degree so if this theta is 90 degree how will the pendulum look so if the pendulums with charges in the box fall freely in a lift not the sorry the balls are not falling the lift is falling freely then the angle theta will be 90 so the string will take this shape this angle from the vertical will be 90 90 so this is q this is q so no gravity because it is falling freely so how will the forces balance this electrostatic force on this by this that will balance tension force tension will be equal to electrostatic force and what will be the value of the electrostatic force point charges now 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q divided by the length of the pendulum was l but i want distance between the charges so this is also l so it will be 2 l whole square okay so that will be the tension which is the right answer option c see the problem is easy if you do directly like this but you have to understand no why it why it will why it will go like this that is because when a system falls freely the effective gravity will be absent matlab if you are in that frame you will not feel any gravity the effects of gravity will be absent the effect of gravity will be absent question number 15 you see now okay it says a non-conducting ring of radius capital R has uniformly distributed positive charge. So there is a ring and there is uniform distribution of positive charge. Uniform distribution of positive charge. Uniformly distributed. Now they are asking a small part of the ring of length D is removed. A small part, wherever you can remove. So let us say here I remove small part. This is length is how much we told? Mm, D. So this D is therefore very small than the radius of the ring. So this part is removed. Now they are asking. The electric field at the center of the ring will be now how much? Okay, what will be the electric field? If you remember last class only we did this. I told you when there is charge here, when there was charge, when there was charge here, electric field in the center was how much? Zero because it is symmetric, uniform distribution of charge. For every charge, electric field here will be this side. But this charge will be that side so total here will be zero if there is charge everywhere so electric field here due to the whole charge here was zero okay now that means electric field due to this part when there was charge here electric field due to this part okay will be here because you can consider this like a point charge and what will be the value of the charge here dq if i write it will be total charge is q total length is 2 pi r into length of this part that is d okay understood now so this d represents the length don't cancel this d and this d this is length of this part this d is from differentiation 
So this BQ represents small charge. So whatever charge was present here, that was creating some electric field here. E let us call. And that E how will you write? Since I can consider this as a point charge. Why? Because they told this D is very small. So I can write E as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught charge here. Q divided by 4 pi R into D divided by this distance, which is R square. Yes or no? So the electric field will be total charge this length into 4 the 8 pi square epsilon naught R Q. So this is the electric field. Okay. Now this is electric field due to this part. Okay. Do now so if you are confused, think like this. Think this is complete. But let us put some mark here. Okay. And there is charge here. Right now there is charge here also. So what I am saying is due to this part electric field here will be like this due to remaining part electric field must be here exactly same exactly same why because total electric field is what zero according to question data i know i mean since it is uniform ring electric field here must be zero na yes or no students so therefore if electric field here is zero that means if you consider one small part and if that part produces electric field here E, then remaining part must create opposite electric field. Otherwise, how it will be zero? Tell me. Superposition principle says what? Superposition principle. It says if there are multiple charges, electric field at any point is due to each charge and you have to add vectorially, vector sum. So the whole distribution I can think is the whole charge I can think as made up of this part and remaining part. So this part is so small that it will create electric field this way and remaining part will create that way. But this one is easy to calculate. This one may not be easy because this is so many charges are here. No, but this is easy because this is due to a small part. So this one easily I can use Coulomb's law. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught charge divided by R square. Understood? Understood? Right? Okay. Now, they, now the question was, if you cut this, what will be electric field here? Now it cannot be zero because now, since you have cut this part, this part will not be. So this will be your electric field. But you know this is equal and opposite to this one. And this one we have found. So electric field due to this ring with a cut will be this only. And direction will be where? Towards the cut part. So wherever you have cut, electric field will be towards that cut part. Okay. So let's see which option. So directed towards the gap. So they are calling this gap. Okay. So directed towards the gap, we are calling this gap and proportional to and inversely proportional to R cube, inversely proportional to R square. Now many of you may think it is inversely proportional to R square, but here it is inversely proportional to R cube. Uh, let us continue now question number 17. So this question again came in KVPY. Okay. So it says two charges plus Q and minus two Q. Two charges plus Q and minus two Q are located at points A and B respectively. The electric field is zero at a point which is located at a finite distance on the perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So if this is the line AB, perpendicular bisector will be this. So they are saying on option A, electric field is zero somewhere here. 
no chance, no chance. Because this A will produce electric field away. This minus will produce towards. Total of this can never be zero. This will be the resultant electric field. So here it cannot be zero. Electric field cannot be zero. <coughs> Option B is saying left of A. Left of A left on the line. Option C between A and B. Between A and B. Yeah. Option C right of B. So here it cannot be zero. So where it can be zero? Electric field. See between A and B electric field cannot be zero because if you take any point here due to this plus it will be away electric field due to minus it will be towards the minus. So these two electric fields are in same direction so they will add. So here or here it can be zero but I have always told you it will always be zero near the weaker charge. So this is the weaker charge in magnitude this is twice of this. Minus is there to tell you the direction of electric field. The magnitude of the charge will control the magnitude of electric field. So this will produce stronger electric field than this. So you should be nearer to this so that the electric fields are balanced. So if you are nearer to the weaker charge, electric field due to plus will be away, due to minus will be towards. And those two electric fields can balance if you are near the weaker charge. So which is the right option? Left of A. Left of A means option B. <coughs> now let us see question number 18. A charged dust particle of radius. So there is a particle but radius there given means it is spherical. So radius is R. And the value of the radius is 5 into 10 power minus 7 meter. Very very small, no? 0 0.5 micrometer. Very small dust particle is moving in a horizontal electric field, and the value of the electric field is given 6.28 into 10 to the power 5 newton per coulomb. The surrounding medium is air with coefficient of viscosity. Coefficient of viscosity 1.5. 6 into this point okay 10 to the power minus 5 newton second per meter square if the particle is moving with uniform horizontal speed so the speed of the particle is 0 0.02 meter per second and it is uniform then they are asking the number of excess electrons on the dust particle. Here they have written drop. It is dust particle. So they want number of excess electrons in the dust particle. Now look here. Here is the dust particle let us say. Okay. It is moving in a uniform horizontal. How do I know uniform? See the value. It's a number. It's a number means it's constant. So electric field is let us say this side. Now how many excess electrons it has they are saying. Now if it has electrons this will be negatively charged. So it will feel a force this side. Because of electric field. Let us call it F E. This is negative charge. Minus Q let us say. So minus Q charge in electric field will feel a force in opposite direction. So many times I have told you. Now if there is force it will always accelerate. But the question said that it is moving with uniform velocity. Uniform velocity means acceleration is zero. In a straight line, if you are moving uniformly, then neither your vector is neither your direction is changing nor your magnitude of velocity is changing. In a straight line, they said it, it is the dust particle is moving. So the acceleration of the particle is zero. So the force should be net force should be zero from Newton's second law. But there is one force here. So they said the medium has viscosity. This is called coefficient of viscosity. So this dust particle as it moves will feel a retarding force which is called a viscous force. 
okay so if it is moving with uniform speed then net force net force should be zero this is summation isn't it? so net force zero means this force should balance this force in magnitude so if the charge is q what is the electrostatic force q e okay because in terms of electric field we have to write now and what is viscous force for a spherical body in first period we have studied stokes law stokes law 6 pi eta r b this is from stokes law so from here you can find the charge on the dust particle and once you know the charge you can find the number of excess electrons right so you know that from here charge on the dust particle will be 6 pi eta r p divided by e and you know that q is number of excess electrons into e this is from your quantization of charge will be 6 pi eta r b divided by e so number of excess electrons will be 6 pi eta r b e into e right so now you have to just substitute the values and get the answer <coughs> so let us write so this is 6 pi value i can write 3.14 coefficient of viscosity is given 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 5 radius is 5 into 10 power minus 7 5 into 10 power minus 7 velocity is 0 0.02 0 0.02 divided by charge of electron is how much 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb electric field value was given 6.28 6.28 into 10 to the power 5 okay so how much would you get here <coughs> so you can see this 1.6 and 1.6 will cancel right now if you take here see approximately this is 3.14 one side is 3.14 and this is 2 side right 2 into 3.14 is 6.28 and this is 2 3 side 6 so this will be 3 into minus 5 minus 7 minus 2 f this right now this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 5 so into 5 will be this will be 2 into 10 power minus 2 into 5 it will be 10 power minus 1 it will be 10 no minus and here minus 19 plus 5 will be minus 14 that will go up plus 14 so the whole thing will be 65 will be 1 so it will be 10 to the power 1 which means 30 excess electrons will be there so which is the answer option b okay let us say question number 19 so question 19 is about you know pendulum's time period so i hope you all remember the time period of pendulum is 2 pi root over l by g okay so before i continue let me remind you once, okay, question number 19. Now first you see one concept, okay. Okay, look carefully. So imagine there is a pendulum. T is the force and mg is the weight, gravitational force. And usually this will balance this in equilibrium. It is slightly displaced the pendulum, little bit, theta. Then this mg will be here this tension will be here now displacement is in this direction no? we have taken the ball from here to here so if this is displacement you want acceleration in this direction and that x direction is this so you want acceleration in this direction so this t is perpendicular 
to this direction. So there will be no components. So mg will have one component here, one component here. This we have already done in first view. I am trying to revise because something, uh, something nice I will be doing now. Okay. So this is theta, this is also theta. So this will be mg cos theta and this will be mg sin theta. So in this direction, the only force is mg sin theta. These two are not in this direction. So, so the force in this direction, which is your restoring force, is mg sin theta. Okay. And then your acceleration in this direction will be force in this direction divided by mass. It will be g sin theta. And then sin theta, you can write approximately theta for small theta. So for small theta, sine of angle is approximately angle. For example, sine 0 is 0. See, best example. So sine theta can be written as theta. And you took the pendulum from here to a very small angle here. So this is your displacement x. This is your angle theta. So if you look carefully, this is like, you know, arc of a circle. If you take a circle, and you take a small part, it, it it looks like a straight line. So this small straight line can be taken as arc. And for arc, for angle, what is arc? Sorry, what is angle in terms of arc? Arc divided by this length. This is L. Right? Theta equal to arc length by radius. Here radius is this length. So what is theta? X by L. <coughs> So you can see acceleration will be g by l x. And from SHM equation, simple harmonic motion equation, what do you know acceleration? Minus omega square x in magnitude, forget the minus sign. So if you see this omega square must be g by l. So omega will be root of g by l. So time period is 2 pi divided by omega root over l by g. So almost full derivation I have done. So now, <coughs> why I am doing this is because suppose now I say to you that for this pendulum time period is what is the formula? 2 pi root over L by G. Let me write T dash okay because this is tension. Don't, don't, don't think this is time period, huh? this is force, this is time. Now, in, let us say for same pendulum, I put charge, charge on the pendulum. And then I apply uniform electric field downwards. Then if you now draw what forces will act, then what forces will act? Tension like before T dash, mg. And there will be now one more force downwards, Q into E. Because this is positive charge, electric field is down. So basically now, I can replace the forces by tension up. And these two are together down. No, since they are in the same direction, I can write here. Mg plus Qe. Before what was there? Mg. And here what we write? See here. Here we write G. And how do you get G? Just divide this mg by m. So you can repeat whatever derivation I did. No, you can repeat for this pendulum. But there is no point doing that. Because if you use this technique, that whatever G comes here is the force mg divided by m. So here also, this is the force now. Because of electric field, this E also will come. Electrostatic force will also come. So you try to calculate G effective. So G effective will be this force mg plus QE divided by M, which will be G plus QE divided by M. Okay, so then your time period will be in this case. This is the case of first view. So when there is electric field downwards and you make the pendulum oscillate like this, your time period will be 2 pi root over L by, in place of this G, you have to write G effective, which will be what? G plus QE by M. 
Okay, so this change you have to do. If there is electric field, if there is no electric field, this part would be zero. You will get the same answer. Okay, you can do the derivation if you want, but that is time wasted. You know that. Try to find this downward force in equilibrium, and as it oscillates, as it oscillates here, okay, T dash will be here, and the force here will be m g plus q. So you have to take components of this force like I did. Then repeat the same derivation which I did for this. You will get the same answer. So the best thing is do this and then divide by m mass. That will be the time period. Okay. What if your electric field was not down but it was up? What if the electric field was upward? Then this Q E will be up. Mg will be down, QE will be up. Right, so now the force here will be T dash and this Mg is down, QE is up. So net force will be Mg minus QE. Yes or no? Because this two in opposite direction. So let us say this is 10, this is, um, this is 2, so this must be 2. This is an equilibrium no, right now. So this, so I can write this as this is 10, and this mg and this q e together I can write 10 here, 12 minus 2. Okay. So then your time period would be this would be minus, your effective would be minus. Okay. So that is how the formulas will change if electric field is upward, uniform electric field. Now students think. This is your q. And I apply electric field like this. Not like this, like this. Then you know this pendulum will not stay here in equilibrium. Already I told you, no, it will deflect somewhere here. And what will be the forces if you remember? Here tension T dash, here mg, and now your QE will not be down, it will be here. Right? And then before see before mg and QE was in same direction. So here we wrote mg plus QE. This is for when electric field is upward. Then QE electrostatic force will be upward. So the force which is acting downward, which balances this tension, is what? Mg minus Q. Here you have to take neither plus nor minus because these two are neither in same direction nor in opposite direction. So you have to take resultant of these two. So resultant of those two forces will be in this direction. And that will be what? Root over Mg square plus Qe square right it is like two vectors a and b perpendicular to each other the resultant formula is what root over a square plus b square okay so now you see this force is opposite to this tension so to find g effective what i have to do divide that force divide that force by mass right same thing like we have done till now that derivation which we did so now if you put this m inside put this m inside it become m square so i can write this as g square plus q e by m whole square so this is your g effective okay so I am putting this m inside the square root, then I have to put m square. So now what will be the time period of this pendulum? And by the way, this pendulum will not oscillate this way, it will oscillate this way, this way. So this is the equilibrium position, okay, it will oscillate this way. And what will be the time period? Root by root over. L by G effective. 
Okay, and now you play such G effective word you should write. Root over this is your G effective. No, so let me tell you G square plus Q E by M whole square. So while doing one problem, I have done three problems. Electric field in the direction of mg, electric field in the opposite direction of mg, and electric field perpendicular to the direction of mg. And all the three electric fields were uniform electric field. So if you see question number 19, it is exactly the same question. A simple pendulum has a length L, mass of the bob is M, the bob is given a charge Q, the pendulum is suspended between two vertical plates of a charged parallel plate capacitor. If E is, forget about the capacitor word right now, if E is the field strength between the plates, so there are two plates like this and there is electric field between the plates. If the plates are vertical, electric field will be horizontal like this. So they are asking what is the time period equals to. So time period in this case to find, just find the G effective. Okay, so find which force is balancing the tension in equilibrium and then divide that force by mass. Okay. So I will stop the problem, I will sorry, stop the uh, class for today, but before I stop, let me give you one question to think. Okay. So imagine I have a pendulum like this, okay, and it has a charge Q, mass is M, length is L, and now when it oscillates, it has a time period 2 pi root over L by G. We all know this, right? But suppose I ask you what is the time period of this same pendulum when I keep here another charge Q here. here. It is not a uniform electric field. So what will be the time period in this case? Options are greater than t, less than t, equal to t. Last option you know right, data is insufficient. So this, this t dash, the time period of the pendulum when you keep charge at the point of suspension. This is also called point of suspension. So next class we will be doing JE level. So please revise uh, MCQs will become more interesting provided you remember the formulae and the concepts. So before you really start you know, solving more and more MCQs, try to be very strong in the uh, subject. So try to remember what is electric field, how to find force between point charges, how to use superposition principle. Okay. So all those things you try to think carefully and then see how I am solving the problem, practice more number of times and with practice students you will become expert. See there is nothing called God gifted and all. Sachin Tendulkar people say has you no know, he is God gifted and all. But nobody knows how much practice he has done to be the best in his time. So when you keep practicing, keep practicing something which you like, which you love, then with time automatically you become very good. And then other people start thinking that, oh, you are God gifted like that. Understood or not? So if my voice is not very good, I see everybody will laugh. But if I keep doing riyas, riyas after riyas, riyas means practice for singing. I keep doing, then I can sing very nicely. Understood or not? So that much time and passion you have to give. Then you can also be very, very good in solving MCQ problems. Okay. Thank you. See you next class.